Okay, awesome. So, totally just saw Cloverfield Lane, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, that's the name of it. And, um, yeah, pretty good, actually. It's way better than I expected it was going to be, you know? For some reason, I just I came into this movie, like, really, really wanting to dislike it. You know what I mean? So I went there, like, I went to a matinee and shit, and I, like, sat in the back, and I'm all, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna hate this, ooh, uh, you know what I mean? I was going all crazy about it, fucking, because, like, I really am not a fan of the original Cloverfield. <laughs> fucking hate that movie. And it's all because of the characters, right? And the found footage doesn't work for me. Like, in a lot of movies, the found footage is fucking ridiculous, and I hate it. Then again, I have a re- I have a feeling the reason I hate that movie is because I like I didn't see it in the theater, you know. Like I saw it like on my tiny ass TV like later on, you know, like with with somebody who actually like really really liked it, you know what I mean. So like I felt the need to like it with them, and it just kind of like made me look for all these little shitty things about the movie that I fucking hated. But Ten Cold Reveal Lane is awesome, kind of. You know, I went into the movie wanting to hate it. So, I totally looked at it with, like, a super, like, you know, I was looking for problems the whole time. And, like, of course, when you look for shit, you, like, find it in a movie. You know what I mean? So, but, you know, it's, it's worth it, though. It's worth, a, it's worth a shot, I think. If you can just kind of turn off, like, that critical aspect of your, of your brain and, like, try not to point shit out, you know, to yourself while you're watching it. Because, like, good points. Okay. Performances are fucking odd point from everybody. There's pretty much just three people in the fucking movie. Right? Which is awesome. I like that. Like, this, like, little enclosed, like, weird, like, thing. Because, like, the whole thing is, like, they're in this dude's bomb shelter. It's, like, John Goodman, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and some fucking guy. <laughs> Who, like, I'm sure he's been in, like, a ton of movies. And I'm sure he's, you know, a pretty good actor. But I can't remember his damn name. John Gallagher Jr.? Is that him? Probably. Top build cast, John Gallagher Jr. Yeah, there he is. What else is he in? Jonah Hex. Which I haven't seen. I heard it's bad, though. Actor. Hush. Ooh, Hush was good. The Newsroom, Short Term, Margaret. He's been in a lot of stuff I haven't seen. Some Law & Order episodes. The Battery's Down. No idea what the fuck that is. Love Monkey. Peace of April. No, well, he's good in it, though. He's, he plays, like, some hillbilly dude who, like, never went to, who intentionally didn't go to college, even though he's going to, I don't know, weird thing. But, um, yeah, they're in it, and they're, like, the principal characters, and they're pretty much the only people in the movie, other than, like, a guy's vo- voice on a phone and some lady who freaking, like, has her face melt off and, like, beats her head against the door. But, like, John Goodman's good. He's doing his thing. He's doing his, like crazy evil guy John Goodman like so he's doing kind of he's doing like a like a bit more sympathetic guy from the end of Barton Fink kind of like his character from that how he's all crazy and chasing like Barton Fink around and cutting heads off and shit (laughs) you know he's like that but he's like he's a bit more sympathetic Mary Elizabeth Winstead She's good. She's pretty good. She's she's like a she's a decent actress. I've only ever seen her in like three things though. In Scott Pilgrim, she was awesome in. Um, the thing. Nobody was good in the in the thing remake. That was, <laughs> that was like that, that was just a, a movie that was just doomed. Like I don't think it's really her fault that she was bad in it. It's just that it was a bad movie and like she couldn't do anything to save it. You know, and this. The, and this is pretty much the only three things I've seen her in. I guess she was in Death Proof as well. Although, I think that was before I knew who she was. So, you know, she didn't really stand out to me. And this, and this Gallagher dude, he does a good job. You know. Because, like, and it's, like, real important for the movie that the, that the acting and the characters are fucking on point. Because pretty much all it is is, like, there's Cloverfield shit going on. And uh, John Goodman's guy's name is Howard like, traps these two fucking people in his bomb shelter together, and he's, like, you know, and he's, like, kind of an unstable weird dude with, like, a lot of weird habits and, like, crazy shit that he does, you know? So it's, like, a little spooky, right? And they're, like, all trying to escape all the time and stuff, even though, like, you know, 
bad shit could be going on outside. But like, he might be a killer, you know. What I mean? <laughs> so we gotta, you know, we gotta get out of this one. So like, they try and they figure out that there was actually like an apocalypse and shit, and he's not just lying to them. And so they like they hang out for a while, and everything gets pretty cool because like, he starts out like real intense, you know what I mean? He starts out like all fucking like brooding and shit and like screaming at people and like punching the wall and like fucking like having like veiled murder threats and like telling everyone they should be grateful and shit and then like but then he chills out for a while you know like they just end up hanging out and like eating dinner together and fucking like watching like cannibal airlines and <laughs> we could play Yahtzee and shit like that you know fucking just like everything seems pretty cool and then like Winsett's character, his name, I can't remember, Michelle, I think is her name, she fucking, uh, discovers that he might be, like, some kind of serial murderer or something that abducts, like, fucking, like, young girls and, like, murders them in his bomb shelter, so she freaks out and then everything else goes fucking straight to hell again and, you know, shit goes from there and it go it gets bad, it gets, it gets dark after that, um, in a lot of ways, which I'm not gonna give away, you know. But there's, you know, there's murder and mayhem and fucking suspense, and it's all, it's all pretty cool. It's all, like, enclosed in this, like, creepy space. It looks like somebody's fucking, like, 70s-ass, like, mobile home, you know? Like, the, like, the way he's got, like, his trailer set up. Or his trailer, his fucking bomb shelter. It looks like, you know, somebody's, like, converted basement, almost. Like, the, they have, like, a little common area, and the rest of it's, like, super bunker and shit. And there's, like, machines and, you know weird, like, stuff going on, but he's got, like, the full kitchen, it's a pretty sweet fucking apocalypse setup, honestly, and, like, if I was in that situation, this is one of those movies that, like, it's a good thing about it, is, like, it kind of, it kind of lets you imagine what you do in that situation, which I love, that's, like, and, like, I, like, a lot of people like that kind of shit, like, I think that's why, like, the zombie apocalypse is so, like, popular, like, in, like, culture and shit, because, like, you can, you can imagine, like, how you'd handle that shit, you know? But, um, yeah, man. So, but yeah, like, they, they get in this bunker with this dude, and it's weird, and, like, and there's a car accident, and, you know, like, bad shit's going on, and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, it gets, it gets strange and shit, and they just kind of, like, they kind of don't adapt their social norms to, like, an end-of-the-world scenario, I think, because, like, they, they assume this guy might be a killer, and even though he's been super cool for, like, weeks... You know, they're like, well, you know, I don't know, maybe <laughs> maybe you should just roll with it. Maybe he killed one girl and you should just fucking let it go because they, they fucking, like, blow up their entire thing and everything goes to hell. <laughs> you know, that's just my weird little opinion. Like, maybe I'd just fucking let it slide. Maybe I'd find a bloody earring and I'd just fucking, I'd just let it go. You know? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. You know, it's hard to tell what anyone would do in that kind of a situation. But yeah, okay, so... Performance is on point. There's a lot of suspense. The sound design in this movie is fucking intense. It's really good. That's that actually, honestly, that's probably like the best part of this thing. Is like most of this movie is actually told through like sound, you know, because like it's hard to tell what's going on like in a lot of it, you know, because they're in this bomb shelter and shit, but you can hear stuff going on outside, so you can hear like weird Cloverfield shit like happening, and like a whole bunch of like creepy stuff, and like there's definitely like the sound like because Winstead's like little like she's got like her own little like cell in the place and like she, she's got like a giant security door on it and, like every time that door opens it's just like this crazy ass sound and that's like a big deal in the movie you know you can hear um like John Goodman doing his like his fat guy wheeze like throughout the entire thing sounds super weird and like menacing but they like they bring that out like really hard so you can absolutely tell that, you know, he's like a fucking, like, a really intense fat dude who breathes out of his mouth all the time. You know? <laughs> good shit, though. Super good. Um, yeah, man. It's real good. Like, the soundtrack's on point. It's fucking, like, really, like, just perfect for, like, the kind of, um, like, just the kind of a movie it is. Because it's just, like, spooky-ass, like, songs from the 60s and stuff. You know, they're kind of, like, percussive and, like, just whiny. You know, like, so, it sounds awesome. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's, that's the good points right there. Like, everything else, it gets, it gets a little shitty. There's, like, a few, there's, like, for one thing, the script 
was obviously a different movie that didn't involve like monsters and shit <laughs> like and it's it's super easy to tell like throughout the thing because there's you can like if you look real close you can find artifacts of like a different script that was like maybe about a guy who trapped people in his bomb shelter with him even though there was no apocalypse going on you know and like it, it might just be about like a crazy guy like it feels like they took like the artifacts of that script and they turned it into a Cloverfield movie. They, like, they just kind of took some shit, mixed it up, and, like, kind of shoehorned this into a continuity with a movie that wasn't supposed to have a sequel that was just about, like, a big monster that fucking, like, stepped on New York and it's done, you know? So there's, like, yeah, there's weird shit in the, in the script that just comes out, and you're like, this is obviously, you know... This is it, this is one of those like franchise things where, you know, sh shit just kind of ended up getting like shoehorned into a kind of like kind of like those weird like straight to video Hellraiser sequels, you know, almost or like, I don't know. There's there's movies like this, you know. There's there's movies that like just don't feel like, you know, they feel like they came from like a different, fucking like idea somehow. There's like a lot of video games have this too. Like a lot of, you know, they they feel like. Somebody had a really good idea for a video game, but they were afraid it wouldn't sell, so they uh, they changed just, like, a little bit of it, stuck it into a continuity with other shit. So, yeah, you know, that's, like, kind of a big deal in this, that it's, it's kind of a turn-off. But you'll never know unless you look for it. You'll, you'll never know unless you come in, you know, really wanting to fucking harsh this movie like I did. You know, there's a, there's a few other weird things about it. There's, like... There's all this, there's a scene between, like, Winstead and Gallagher where they do, like, this whole, like, character backstory exposition, like, dialogue with each other, and it just, it doesn't need to be in the movie at all. It doesn't, uh, it almost feels like they ad-libbed it, or maybe, like, there was, like, a rewrite, just, like, while they were shooting, like, give, like, these characters a little bit more depth, but they didn't really need it. There was, like, you know, I, I would have been fine. Because, like, she has this story about, like, oh, fucking one time I saw this little kid getting her ass kicked by her dad at a, at a hardware store. Nobody, uh, it doesn't matter, though. It doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the movie. <laughs> it's just kind of, like, a weird little awkward, like, moment, like, within the, within the film itself. So, yeah. There's that. That didn't need to be in there. And, like, the last ten minutes of the movie, right? Um, are a different movie entirely. Like, they get out of the bomb shelter in a, in a really cool way, you know, like, which kind of, like, blends some of, uh, Winstead's actual character backstory that you, you, that you see, like, throughout the movie. Like, she uses the skills of what, like, she does before the apocalypse to, like, get out of the, the, out of the fucking bomb shelter and do, like, a bunch of shit. And, like, you know, everything, like, Stuff that's mentioned, like, within the movie, like, comes back, which I really love when they set stuff up, like, properly. You know, when they're like, you know, this thing does this. So, and then later, it, like, comes back, you know, and, like, when you're kind of, like, looking for it. It's great. That's good screenwriting. I love it. Um, but, yeah, like, the last ten minutes of the movie, you're like, you know, they get out of the bunker, fucking aliens are real. You know, like, a whole bunch of crazy sci-fi shit's going on, and it just, it doesn't make any sense in the context of the rest of the movie. Like, it's, it's almost like it goes on, like, a little bit too long, and they're, um, they're, like, really trying to, like, push the monster angle, like, in the last, like, ten minutes, and it's just kind of like, it feels like they just kind of threw all that shit together and just, like, threw it in the film. You know, that's okay. Whatever. <laughs> um, you know, but it's not that bad. And, of course, they have that, they have a scene where people are driving away from, like, the bad shit that's happening in the apocalypse, and they hear some stuff on the radio, and then, like, they change their whole, like, life's direction and decide to go on an adventure. You know, you don't need that. Even if you're gonna have a sequel, you don't need it. Because, like, you know, I don't, I, like, I don't need that little bit of setup. I'm, I'm totally good to imagine that a whole bunch of crazy-ass adventures can go on in, like, a, like a post-flying space monster Cloverfield deep south you know what I mean like you, you don't need to set it up that this lady's gonna you know, like go on additional like fucking 
spooky monster adventures like in this in this world that they have like which i think they they might have been setting it up for a sequel it really really felt like it and if they weren't then that makes this movie like worse right because there's there's no reason to tie it all together like they do at the end like because they don't really tie anything together they just kind of drag it out like movies tend to do now don't like it you know could have ended about like it would have been way more impactful if it ended about five minutes early you know of course right um, is there anything else that I didn't like? You know, honestly, there's not. I can't really, uh, really think of anything else I didn't like. It was just... Some of the, like, the, the weird attempts at characterization were kind of a bummer. And, um, just, yeah, like, the last five minutes, I, I was just not into it, you know? Didn't, uh, didn't need to be there. But, uh, you know... As opposed to Cloverfield, this is an actual movie, you know, <laughs> with like, with like real attempts at like cinematic techniques and shit like that, you know. So you'll, you know, that you know that gives it the that gives it the edge of, over Cloverfield. Like the performances in it, are fucking great, you know. It doesn't rely too much on special effects. Awesome, um, John Goodman's character in it, it's awesome, right? Because like he's like some ex like Navy guy who like worked on satellites or whatever in the Navy and like originally you get the idea that he's just like a kind of a, like a doomsday prepper dude and he's just kind of crazy you know and like he's just kind of like alienated his family and they left and like he might have murdered a girl <laughs> but um like but when you kind of look into it and like after the film and you kind of like examine the shit that was going on you kind of realize that like through the dialogue that he drops he uh he was probably like a regular dude and then he found out about aliens and shit that like were really excited about coming <laughs> coming to earth and killing people and he went crazy you know like with that realization and he became a doomsday proper and like his fucking family like bailed on him you know so like he's he's like almost like a sympathetic crazy fucking gun wielding maniac which is awesome which is like it's hard to do you know with like the villain of a piece like this especially to make him like Oh, yeah, like, I kind of get, you know, why he'd fucking freak out like that, you know, because he actually found out about aliens. Because, like, there's, like, a, like, there's dialogue in the movie where he's talking about how, um, you know, he's, he's like, there was some kind of an attack, and, like, he's kind of, like, not giving information out too much. He's like, it's either, you know, Russians were developing crazy weapons, or, you know, it could be terrorists, or it could be, like, a number of things. And he says, like, well, of course, if the Martians ever figure out how to get here their weapons are going to be fucking insane and we're all going to be screwed. <laughs> you know, and like, he drops that and it feels like he drops it just to, you know, it's like a line of crazy guy dialogue to show that he's a crazy guy. But like, as shit goes on, you know, you realize that he probably heard the Martians talking on one of the satellites he was working on and he fucking freaked out. You know, which is awesome. I really, really like that. It's good. That's good shit. You know, and, um, throughout dialogue and the rest of the movie they tease like this uh this other shit like the um, the dude i think his name's emmett the other guy in the in the bunker he's talking about like it's like yeah howard's a weird guy who likes conspiracy theories and he starts talking about martian brain worms so i'm hoping that if they make a cloverfield 3 it'll be about martian brain worms because like you know fucking howard knew knew what the hell was up and it drove him crazy right and like He's well aware that, like, the, the third phase of this, it was giant monsters, then flying fucking weird UFO gas chemical weapon ships, and then the last phase is going to be brain worms, and it's going to fuck everybody up, and everyone's going to go crazy. So, awesome. I really hope, I'm, I'm hoping for that to be Cloverfield 3, the brain worms, bad robot. Please make it that. But, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so, you know, it was pretty good. If you don't look at it too closely, it's a really, really good movie, you know. And if you do, it's still, it still holds up. It's still fun. It's just, you know, there's going to be, like, little bits of shit that are going to, like, stick to you and you're not going to like it. So, uh, awesome. Go see it if you haven't.